Okay, friends. I'm going to say that this month is going to mark the 45th anniversary of the original Star Wars, which is still to come this month. But brace yourselves as I get ready to do the Saga Begins for the series as I start with a re-review of Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace. Big days, entertainment rankings and reviews. So greetings, my fellow YouTubers, and welcome to Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. My name's Duol, they're known to you as the Big D, and this time around I bring to you a re-review of the 1999 epic space opera Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Mist, originally released by Fox for Lucasfilm Limited, written and directed by George Lucas, who brought us the original series back in 1977. Of course, this was the fourth overall film, first since Return of the Jedi in 1983. But it was the first film of a prequel trilogy and the first chronological chapter of the Skywalker Saga. The film was set 32 years before the original trilogy, during the era of the Galactic Republic. And the plot follows Jedi Master Qui-Gon Jinn and his apprentice Obi-Wan Kenobi, which I am going to say this is a good way to promote the up-and-coming Obi-Wan Kenobi series that's coming up on Disney Plus later this month. Anyway, as they tried to protect Queen Padme Amidala of Naboo in hopes of securing a peaceful end to an interplanetary trade dispute, joined by Anakin Skywalker, a young slave with unusually strong natural powers of the Force, they simultaneously contend with the mysterious return of the Sith. Anyway... After Return of the Jedi, George Lucas was unmotivated to return to the franchise and continue the story beyond it. Though the backstory he created for on Anakin sparked interest in him to develop a prequel trilogy. Well, and then it soon came out. And, well, it came out... With a bit, with a big release, but got mixed reviews though. Uh, anyway, let's get into the story. The Trade Federation creates a turmoil in the Galactic Republic by blockading the Plan Naboo in protest of recent legislation taxing major galactic trade routes. The Republic's leader, Supreme Chancellor Finis Volera. Valorum, excuse me, dispatches Jedi Master Qui-Gon Jinn and his apprentice, Obi-Wan Kenobi, to negotiate with Trade Federation Viceroy Newt Gunray. Darth Sidious, a Sith Lord and the Trade Federation secret benefactor, orders the Viceroy to kill the Jedi and begin an invasion with an army of battle droids, but the Jedi escape and flee to Naboo. During the invasion, Qui-Gon rescues a Gungan outcast, Jar Jar Binks, who unfortunately this character was what got caused criticism for. Yeah. Enough about that. Indebted to Qui Gon, Jar Jar leads the Jedi to Oto Gunga, the Gungan's underwater city. But the Jedi failed to persuade the Gungan leader, Boss Nass, to help the planet's surface dwellers, but managed to obtain Jar Jar's guidance and underwater transport to Thede, the capital city of Naboo. After rescuing Queen Amidala, the group make their escape from Naboo aboard her royal starship, intending to reach the Republic capital planet of Kurosawa. Passing through the Federation blockade, the ship is damaged in the crossfire and its hyperdrive malfunctions. The ship lands for repairs on the outlying desert planet of Tatooine. Situated beyond the Republic's jurisdiction, Qui-Gon Jar Jar, along with astromech droid R2-D2 and Queen Padme Amidala in disguise as one of her own handmaidens, visit the settlement of Mos Espa to purchase a new part for their harbor drive. They encounter junk dealer Watto and his nine-year-old slave Anakin Skywalker, a gifted pilot and engineer who has built a protocol droid known as C-3PO. 
Qui-Gon senses a strong presence in the Force with Anakin and is convinced that he is the prophesied chosen one, destined to restore balance to the Force. With Watto refusing to accept payment in Republic currency, Qui-Gon wagers both the required hyperdrive part and Anakin's freedom in a pod race. Anakin wins the race and joins the group to be trained as a Jedi, reluctantly leaving behind his mother, Shmi. En route to their starship, Qui-Gon encounters Darth Maul, Sidious' apprentice who was sent to capture Amidala. After a brief lightsaber duel, Qui-Gon escapes aboard the starship with the others. Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan escort Amidala to Coruscant, Coruscant and so that she can plead her people's case to Chancellor Valorum and the Galactic Senate. Qui-Gon informs the Jedi Council that his attacker was a Sith, and subsequently asks for permission to train Anakin as a Jedi, but the Council refuses his request, concerned that Anakin is vulnerable to the dark side of the Force. Undaunted, Qui-Gon vows to take up Anakin as his new apprentice. Meanwhile, Naboo's Senator Palpatine persuades Amidala to call for a vote of no confidence in Valorum to elect more capable leader and to resolve the crisis, though she is successful in pushing for the vote. Amidala grows frustrated with the corruption in the Senate and decides to return to Naboo. Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan are ordered by the Jedi Council to accompany the Queen and investigate the return of the Sith, whom they had thought to be extinct for over a millennium. Now, for the final act in the ending. As always, you know the procedure. You have five seconds to stop this video, go to the description box below, and fast forward to the time below. If you've seen the movie already, please continue on. Thank you, and here we go. Okay, you've been warned. On Naboo, Padme reveals herself as the actual queen before the Gungans to gain their trust and persuades them to help against the Trade Federation. Jar Jar is promoted to general and joins his tribe in a battle against the droid army, while Padme leads the search for Gunray in Theed. Qui-Gon tells Anakin to hide inside a starfighter in the palace hangar, but he accidentally triggers its autopilot and flies into space, joining the Naboo pilots in their battle against the Federation droid control ship. With R2's help, Anakin pilots the fire into the ship and causes its destruction from within, deactivating the droid army. Meanwhile, Darth Maul, who has been dispatched by Sidious to assist Gunray, engages in a lightsaber duel with Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan. Maul mortally wounds Qui-Gon, but is then sliced in half by Obi-Wan and falls down a shaft. Qui-Gon asks Obi-Wan to train Anakin before dying in his arms. Following the battle, Gunray is arrested by the pub the Republic, and Palpatine is elected Chancellor. Master Yoda promotes Obi-Wan to the rank of Jedi Knight and reluctantly accepts Anakin as Obi-Wan's apprentice, still considering that he senses much fear in Anakin. A funeral is held for Qui-Gon, attended by the other Jedi, who contemplate that there is still one Sith remaining since there are Always two of them. During a celebratory parade on Naboo, Padme presents a gift to, of thanks to the Gungans to establish peace. End of story. So what did I think of Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace? Well, I have seen this movie a few times, not too many times, but I do have a little bit of a liking for this film. And yes, I remember going to the movie theater seeing this. Yes. Now, now, of course, the film received mixed reviews. Now, the visual effects, action sequences, and some performances, particularly of some of them, were praised. And the musical score, which was done, which was once again done by John Williams, was absolutely superb. Now, some of the performances were absolutely good. Now, our cast included Liam Neeson, whose performance of Qui-Gon Jim was absolutely praised the big time. I had to agree. 
Ewan McGregor plays Obi-Wan, who is very good. Yeah, he actually was cast from a short list of 50 actors, all of whom had been had to be compared to pictures of young Al Guinness, who put, portrayed the elderly Obi-Wan in the original. He was very good, too. Playing Padme is Natalie Portman. Who I think was very... Uh, Goodness. Young Jake Lloyd played Anakin Skywalker, who wasn't too bad. Ian McDermott once again plays Palpatine and Darth Sidious. Well, since he played the character in Return of the Jedi. Ahmed Best does the vocal effects of Jar Jar Binks, who a lot of people did not like and what have you. They criticized some of the characters. That's understanding. They also criticized the pacing of the film and the screenplay. Well, yeah, the screenplay was kind of a little mixed and what have you, but it wasn't too serious. The pacing kind of was a little slow in some parts. But hey, I'm an understanding person. We have Anthony Daniels and Kenny Baker once again doing C-3PO and R2-D2. Let's see, there was Pernilla August as Shmi Skywalker. And, of course, we have Yoda, who is once again voiced by Frank Oz. Anyway, we also have, um, let's see, we have Samuel L. Jackson's Mace Windu, a Jedi Master and high-ranking member of the Jedi Council. And Ray Park played Darth Maul. Very good. Chancellor Valorum was played by Terrence Stamp, who I mostly knew him best for playing General Zod in Superman 2, and he was in the first film for a little bit. There was Kira Knightley, who would later go on to be in the Pirates of the Caribbean films, the first three, as Sabe, one of Amadala's handmaidens. And there were many others. Anyway, I liked the performances. Most of the characters were good, but even though with Jar Jar and several others, they were kind of missed and what have you. But nevertheless, I still thought this was still not too bad of a flick. It's kind of a semi-guilty pleasure of mine. But anyway, I do think... It's pretty good and what have you. The film opened big, surpassing The Mummy when it opened. And it really made a big impact. When it opened in May of 99. Being out the previous big film, which was The Lost World, Jurassic Park. The film even had the second biggest May only weekend, trailing behind that film, and seemed to have Twister, Mission Impossible, Godzilla, Deep Impact, and The Mummy. So anyway, yeah. I thought it was, like I said, fam miss isn't quite one of the best of the Star Wars franchise, but still, it manages to, well, to pull it off and what have you. Uh, anyway, after this, it would be a big success. It will to make a billion dollars worldwide. Uh, and we're going to have two follow-ups, starting with Attack of the Clones in 2002 and Revenge of the Sith in 2005, rounding out the prequel trilogy. So, anyway, well, the characters might be mixed, but the cast was, wasn't too bad. The action sequences were good. The screenplay and pacing might have been a little mixed and what have you. But, and still with a good score by John Williams... Overall, would I recommend Star Wars Episode 1 to Fan Miss? Well, I would say, yeah, if you want to see how it got started for um, Anakin before he became, well, I think you know the story and what, and what have you, okay? 
then this might be worth a go for. But if you're not interested in it, then it's okay to skip it. But you be the judge, okay? It's your choice and what have you. I won't really force you to. So what are your thoughts on Star Wars Episode One: The Fan Miss? You can tell me in the comments section below. If you like this video, click the like button, subscribe to my channel, and be a part of the Big D Nation. And stay tuned, next time I'll be bringing to you a special um, special review that's now going to be put up. I am going to review Stephen King's Firestarter since the new film's out. If I if by any chance I go see it, maybe I'll review it, considering it's not been getting great reviews. But stay tuned, okay? But anyway, thanks for watching, and if you like this, consider checking out these other re-reviews I have recently done. Uh, hopefully this will do better than my original review. In the upper left hand corner is my re-review of Spider-Man from 2002, which it's done much better than the original one. The upper right hand corner is my re-review of Marvel's The Avengers, and the bottom left hand corner is my re-review of Doctor Strange, which I think could get a little better than just them, but I think it's done better than the original review I did. And the bottom right hand corner is the button you can click to subscribe. If you like rankings and reviews on movies, TV, music, video games, etc., then I'm your guy. Thank you for watching. Until next time, I'm the Big D saying, see ya.